All right, guys, welcome in. I'm the Kodiak, and today I'm here to talk about why Stefan Diggs is more likely to be washed than an actual impact player for the Buffalo Bills. But before we get into it, I just want to say, leave a like if you enjoy, and subscribe if you're not already, or you can always wait until the end, and hopefully I'll have earned your liking subscription. I'm going to be making NFL content all offseason long, and let's get right into it. So, Stefan Diggs to the Texans, this move is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I just think that people are wildly overrating this move and this reminds me of the wide receiver version of Dalvin Cook to the Jets last year. Dalvin Cook was clearly uh, bad last year. He was completely cooked and even the year before I was like this guy isn't the same player but casuals absolutely ate that move up over the offseason especially with the hard knock hype and one of the bartenders I work with threw a thousand dollars on the Jets to win the Super Bowl when uh, Dalvin Cook signed with them. And I'm getting a lot of the same vibes because I'm not excited about this move. I don't know how, if you're a Texans fan, you could be excited about this move either. They gave up a second round pick too, which I mean, you have to weigh whether or not that's worth a gamble. I, don't, I definitely don't, especially for a guy who airs his grievances and uh, is as bad in the locker room as Stephon Diggs is. But regardless, uh, so here's how we got to this point. So the Buffalo Bills, they changed coordinators midway through the year after that embarrassing 12-man on the field loss. Joe Brady clearly thought that Gabe Davis, Khalil Shakir, and Dalton Kincaid were more effective personnel groupings on the field rather than just forcing the ball to Diggs. And who could blame him? They were scoring over 28 points a game. They went 7-2 and two over that span. And the Bills were able to run the ball for the first time in seven years and finally won some games after having some really, really rough waters at the beginning of the year. So I can't fault them for doing what worked best for them. They never challenged the immediate boundary. So for a guy that did very well on the sidelines, when you eliminate those looks, uh, you're taking a lot out of his game. And he also didn't get a lot of red zone opportunity because when you are Josh Allen, you are the red zone weapon. And once a month, Gabe Davis also went from being a complete nothing burger to four for 150 and two touchdowns. So from a schematic standpoint, that is why Stefan Diggs was not getting the ball. But talent wise, you cannot tell me that this guy is the same player. And maybe he needed a change of scenery. But this guy is washed. He's not the same player that he was uh, heading into the 2023 season. He had a good first half of the year. And yes, I know he had that injury, but uh, he also mentally checked out. And I'm not excited about this move because even if he still has it physically, with a guy that airs his grievances so publicly, if you're a Texans fan, how can you be pumped about a guy who cries when he doesn't get the ball? And now he has to share the field with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. And Shakir outperformed Diggs' production in the second half of the year with the same amount of targets. So let's just put this in perspective. Diggs is not getting any younger. He's 30. Once these guys, these wide receivers, get to 30 or 31, they tend to drop off quick. Especially uh, the route running, like, seven that Diggs is, he is probably going to age better than, like, the typical wide receiver. But it's crazy to see how many wide receivers fall off around 31 years old. And there's a few exceptions, but will Diggs be an exception? Uh, for me, it doesn't look like it. So even if he is washed, uh, he mentally checked out. He showed very little interest in the entire second half of the season. So I'm not sure if there's an injury that we don't know about, or he just threw a fit because things weren't going his way. But he misplayed a perfect deep ball in the fourth quarter from Josh Allen in the AFC, champ or in the AFC divisional round against the Chiefs this year. And he didn't even attempt to go for another that was within arm's length. So he just didn't look like what uh, we had expected from him. And they went 7-2 and two after not having to use him. They did not give him any targets. And even when they did give him targets, he wasn't efficient on them. And Khalil Shakir virtually outperformed him. So definitely doesn't seem like Joe Brady is someone who doesn't know what he's doing either as an offensive coordinator. And Thielen was the one that he had to share targets with when he was in Minnesota, and he forced his way out then. And I don't think it was Thielen that necessarily pissed him off, but he forced out after they switched offensive coordinators to prioritize the running game with Dalvin Cook. Um, but Diggs has always wanted to be the focal point of this offense, and it's very clear that the new offensive coordinator in Buffalo de-emphasized him for the running game with James Cook, which, great irony <laughs> for being uh, with Dalvin and James, but... That must have pissed Diggs off, and he lost the slack to be a diva, so now we'll see how it turns out. He needs to go out and dominate and back up his talk over the past few years, or he'll fade pretty fast, because when you're getting 170 targets a year and you're still not happy with your situation, like, 
You do you, buddy. But let's just talk about this for Houston. The question is not, is he going to be the second, first, second, or third option? It's, is he going to be the fourth or fifth, fifth option? Because he's going to be the fourth option at very best. And that's not contingent on Collins or Dell or Schultz, because both those guys, all three of those guys, I think are pretty comfortably better than Diggs right now. And depending on how quickly Dell can come back from his fibula, he'll outshine Diggs and outsnap him and outtarget him next year. But whether he's the fourth or fifth option depends on how the Texans want to deploy, uh, how they want to deploy their running backs in the receiving game and how heavily they want to utilize guys with like Mixon. And it's great getting Stroud new weapons, and Slowick is about to start cooking. But I'm not even remotely excited about Stephon Diggs and the Texans. There was a reason that Buffalo, having nothing in their wide receiver room besides Khalil Shakir and Curtis Samuel and Matt Collins, plus the 28th overall pick in this year's draft, there was a reason they traded him. And it's not because he was an asset to that team. If he was worth anything to that team and they weren't willing to take on a massive dead cap hit, they would have kept him. And yeah, he probably forced his way out. He probably forced his hand. He probably went up to the Bills ownership and was like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. So this basically sums up how I feel about Stefan Diggs to the Texans. Leave a like if you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.